Greetings, and welcome to Breaking Bad Week on Earthling Television. I am your host, Garrix Wormuloid. This week's artifact is season number three of Breaking Bad, co-starring Aaron Chris Paul of the Los Angeles Lakers. In season number three, everyone is still reeling from the plane crash, most of all Walter White and Jesse Pinkman, who at this point can't seem to agree on anything. I'm the bad guy. I can't be the bad guy. Walt tells Skyler about his little side project. Methamphetamine. And she tells him about her side project. I fucked Ted. To cheer him up, resident chicken brother Gustavo Fring gives Walt a job in his basement and a brand new coffee maker. Oh my god. Skyler decides she's fun now. Married couples can't be compelled to testify against one another. And gets Saul to help her launder Walt's money, presumably with title if she wants it lossless. Meanwhile, the creators figured they needed more bald characters, so here come Tuco's cousins to avenge his death. <laughs> Hank has a showdown with them leaving him paralyzed below the holster, or at least mostly paralyzed. <laughs> if you're wondering what Jesse's up to, stop freaking out. This part's for you. Jesse has another junkie girlfriend. You seriously want to get high? And immediately adopts her interests, namely kids. He finds out Gus has a thing for kids too, killing them. <laughs> Jesse throws a temper tantrum, and Walt has to save him by getting some new hood ornaments. Walt realizes Gus wants to replace him with the coffee guy, so he gets Jesse to slow roast his ass. By the end of season number one of Breaking Bad, Walt has cast off the shackles of society and fashioned them into charm bracelets of self-reliance. Fuck you and your eyebrows! But season number three finds him right back under the opposable thumb of a powerful superior. Walt's sense of futility mimics the stories of German author Franz Kafka. Totally Kafkaesque. After striving for advancement or acceptance, Kafka's protagonists often find themselves obliterated by cold, bureaucratic structures, or as the Germans called them, structures. Germany, you burnt. Several thousand years ago, along with the rest of your planet. With his masculinity on the line, Walt is confronted with potential displacement by two beta males. I am a nerd. Both on the work front and on the home front. He turns to school, the only remaining front. But everyone knows you can't shit where you teach. Hey, Walt, what's wrong with you? Ultimately, like a supportive pair of briefs, it's Gus Fring who sets the terms for Walt's manhood. A man provides for his family. Through Gus's validation and security, Walt begins to recognize himself as the formidable man he seeks to become. I know I owe you my life. And yet, for some reason, he still drives that Pontiac Aztec. Meanwhile, the true alpha male of the series, drugs cop Hank Schrader, keeps his fists flying on the reg, but only to mask his own feelings of inadequacy. I'm just not the man I thought I was. With Hank injured, Walt's quote-unquote fat stacks put him in position to pay for his treatment, something Walt himself once rejected. I'll always take care of your family. But is making it rain enough to make Walt feel like a big man? I'm not half the man your husband is. Well, there you go. Instead, Walt compensates for his faltering masculinity by seeking obsessive control over the little things, like this Band-Aid. Throughout season number three, he focuses on removing contaminants from his home life and at the office. In the episode Fly, Walt's desperate hunt for the titular contaminant parallels his effort to cleanse his soul. It is only by sharing his fears and regrets with Jesse in a conveniently non-specific way I'm sorry about Jane. that Walt begins to repair their frayed relationship and removes the contaminant that has haunted him most his conscience. But then what do you know? He sees another fly. Earth was known for having hundreds of flies. Walt's obsessive need for authority over his surroundings actually runs counter to the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, from which he derives his nom de plumage. This scientific principle, introduced by German physicist Werner Heisenberg, acknowledges imprecision and unpredictability as essential aspects of quantum physics, and therefore, of all life. It's subatomic particles and endless, aimless collision. That's what science teaches us. And say what you will about Walt's control issues, but he definitely knows a thing or two about collision. The interplay of rigid science and larger mystical forces is also explored in that nerd guy's favorite poem, When I Heard the Learned Astronomer. Written by ZZ Top guitarist Walt Whitman for their album Trace Hombres, this little ditty suggests the universe is built from more than facts and figures and mathematical proofs. It seems like something's missing, doesn't it? And as we all know, he was right. There is more to life. Something beyond the comprehension of power-hungry narcissists like Walter White. A little something called transdimensional body surfing. For Earthling Television, I'm Garrick's Wormuloid. Stay frosty.